Welcome back to Special Report. It is time for our Common Ground segment. Joining us tonight, South Carolina Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace and Florida Democratic Congressman Jared Moskovich. Thank you so much for being here. You have a number of things that uh, you share common ground on, but this is pretty urgent in that it's happening this next week, and that is the United Nations General Assembly and your efforts to try to not have the Iranian president come. You sent a letter to President Biden on the uh, General Assembly saying, considering his appalling human rights violations and his government's ongoing efforts to assassinate U.S. citizens, we must not offer an offender the privilege of setting foot on U.S. soil or the validation of speaking at the United Nations. Their presence in the U.S. or at the U.N. is not only inappropriate, but also potentially dangerous. For you all, a big deal, Congressman? The Trump administration did this once before, as did the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. So this has been a bipartisan issue about not allowing them travel visas to the U.N. I mean, look, the, the world's largest sponsor of terror, right, they're doing it in Lebanon, they're doing it in Iraq, they're doing it in Syria, right? They want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. They're kidnapping Americans. I mean, at the end of the day, why would we let them go to the U.N. and have that world stage and be treated like some sort of leading nation? So do you expect some action? I mean, it sounds like he's coming. We're dealing with a president who endorses mass murder. Mass murder of political dissidents, mass murder of Americans, and why are we just opening the door wide open? And, and think about it, the irony here, just last year, the world's best tennis player was banned from playing in the U.S. Open, banned from traveling to the U.S. to play in the U.S. Open because he wasn't vaccinated. And yet we're going to allow these folks into our nation in just a few days. And um, this should not be the priority, as, as he said, both Trump and Obama denied visas to the Iranian regime, and we should be doing that, too. Um, the United Nations pushes back, say, says they welcome all leaders to be able to co have common ground on a world stage. Uh, the Iranian president spoke to NBC about the anti-government protests in his country uh, just last night. It was an incident. The same incidents uh, happen every day in the U.S. and in the European cities. The Islamic Republic of Iran responded swiftly and follow the issue, those who pro provoked the people and made use of this opportunity, that was the U.S. and European countries. You know, it also comes, Congressman, as the administration has just finished this deal with this uh, prisoner exchange, as well as $6 billion going to Iran, that the president in that interview said he doesn't have any restrictions on that money. Are you concerned about that as well? Well, first of all, that's wonderful propaganda, again, from the Iranians, you know, in their interview. But, and, look, you're talking to someone whose district I represent, the Levinson family. You know, Robert Levinson was taken by the Iranians, and he never came home, right? And so, listen, I think we should do everything we can that when this happens in the world to bring Americans home. But look, no, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the Iranian regime getting additional dollars because at the end of the day, they've shown what happens in the past. They build drones, they wind up in the war with Ukraine. They take that money, they give it to Hezbollah. And so, no, that is very concerning. But listen, we got to do everything we can to bring Americans home because I've seen what happens when families, you know, when, they're, when their father goes missing and they miss weddings and they, and they miss funerals. I mean, it's just, it just, the family is never the same. But the one thing I did want to add about the deal on Monday that the administration made. I think it's one thing to have a prisoner swap. It's totally another when you're giving them $6 billion and you're announcing it on 9-11. I think it's outrageous and it's un-American. And it's not just about their aggression. It's about nuclear arms and nuclear weapons. And I want to know who's telling the truth. Like, is there going to be oversight? Who's going to have the oversight? And where is that money going to go? And how are we going to guarantee that it's not going to build Iran's nuclear weapon system? I want to ask one more thing. Um, and this sometimes is off the rails in some minds. We There was a hearing recently. Uh, about UFOs, and there was a whistleblower who was talking. You had an exchange. Do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? Biologics came with some of these recoveries. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human. Today, there's this Mexican journalist researcher who tells the Mexican congressional hearing that they have these mummified bodies that are not human. Now, this guy has made previous claims before that turned out not to be true, but he says this is different. Now, knowing what you know, do you think that this is coming to pass? I mean, are we going to find out that we should have known this all along? 
Well, I, if if there are bodies out there, I want I got to see it for myself. I have to see it to believe it. I got to touch it, put my hands on it. I don't know what non-human biologics are. We're, I would like to learn more. I would like to. I'm trying right now to get the clearances to get some of those witnesses into a skiff to be able to come back to us and brief us on some of the classified information they could not share. And it's not just about it's not about little green men. It's about money laundering. What has the government spent them their your tax dollars on? Where is it gone? On what programs? There's also the question of are the aliens out there and they're going to come after us. Right. That's well, I, a big I, don't one know that, I don't know that we're there yet, <laughs> Brett. I, I think we have simpler questions like, well, okay, if there are these these weapons programs, like when we used stealth helicopters to go after Osama bin Laden 12 years ago and we didn't know that these stealth helicopters existed, and they came out of Area 51, by the way, are there secret weapons programs, advanced technologies that we have? The, how are they getting funded? The U.S. government has admitted there's 170 instances of UAPs they can't explain. So there is more thread to pull here. I don't know that uh, this, this, those sandcastle people that they showed. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but but I think there is there is bipartisan agreement. Well, thank you very much for being a part of Common Ground. I should say, two time for both of you. That's yeah. pretty. That's a lot of Common Ground. It happens. Thank you. All right. Yeah.